Hi, I'm Pox. I'm Couch Guy. You're watching the Two Smart Guys show where every week we bring you the latest and greatest in hacking fun little toys or at least creative ways of using them. <laughs> Owning your own products. Yeah, some people argue that we're not hacking anything, which is, I don't know, depends on your definition. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what you consider it. I consider ownership. Yeah, so those of you who are hoping for another dessert episode, this is actually a computer board called Raspberry Pi. Uh, but they are still tasty. They, yeah, very tasty. Last week we talked about it a little bit in the specs. This week we're going to show you how to make use of it. We're going to show you a cool little distro um, for XBMC for the Raspberry Pi. RaspBMC, I think. Or RaspBMC. <laughs> RaspBMC. <laughs> yeah. Turning it into the world, one of the world's smallest media centers. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with XBMC, XBMC was originally um, this right here. Old school Xbox. And people would hack this and mod it to be a media center so you could play all kinds of digital files directly to your TV. Um, it was really awesome and then people figured out how to hack this thing so that you could also load XBMC or Boxy on it so that you could play more files than just the ones that Apple permits. Yeah. And uh, eventually um, they've ported it so you could just run on regular computers and now the Raspberry Pi. I think you've got like f five years of iterations of uh, TV media centers right there in front of you. Yeah, and I, I forgot to bring in the new um, Apple TV. It had uh, XBMC running on that as well. Not to mention the boxy box. And, oh, then uh, the boxy boxes. I got anyway, two boxy boxes. Anyways. The fact that it's down to a, 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 basically a, a card the size of a cigarette pack is awesome. Yeah, so here's the steps on installing it. Real simple. You get a micro, or you get a SD card. Um, at least I'd say you know a good eight gig card would be good to have for the distro. And then you download one of the installers. There's one for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And you just pop it in your computer and you run the installer. It will grab the latest stable build and it'll dump it all onto your SD card. Pop it out of your computer. Pop it into your Raspberry Pi. Plug in. Uh, a micro USB cable into a USB power, uh, like your TV, if it has one, or a wall awesome. adapter, and then your HDMI into your TV. And yeah, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you save yourself the, the power run, you can almost save yourself the HDMI and buy yourself the cheapest HDMI in the world, too. It's true. Um, net, most important thing, network. you got to get this on your network somehow. Otherwise, always important. You gotta have speed. It, it doesn't work very well. No wireless. It doesn't <laughs> have any wireless. Otherwise, you're stuck with whatever you can stick in via USB. Yeah, there there may be a way to do that with add-ons and whatnot, but that's more complicated than this episode's gonna get into. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a way with a USB, you know, dock and things like that. We can do stuff with it. But oh, the other thing that you're gonna want to do is be able to control it somehow. You can either plug in. Uh, USB keyboard to control it, or you can download a free app for your iPhone or your Android device for XBMC, and it'll uh, automatically detect the device on your network, and you'll be able to just control it, just like um, anything else, like it's like right there, and you can uh, browse your network and play files from any shares that you have. And it works exactly like any other, you know phone-based uh, in-network device that can control, you know, because a lot of devices anymore have something where either your computer you can control it or your media center or I've seen, don't they have like cable boxes now that you can control from your phone? So it's really straightforward. It looks like it's, you know, it's just a matter of connecting to your network. Uh, always with it, whenever you're doing a network kind of media center thing, you want to try and make sure you're running as fast of a network as you possibly can. So yeah, if you can uh, get some giggy or you know, well, that's you're ideal. <laughs> only as fast as your slowest connection on the way there. The, the, so if some way you pop out to an old hub that you have and you're just putting in there just for the fun of it, you can slow your entire network down. The the cool thing is it, this thing can do 1080p for H.264. Uh, apparently, you can buy other Kodaks that aren't 
like uh, out of the box allowed, uh, like MPEG-2 apparently. The hardware decoding for MPEG-2 is something that you have to purchase. They That's feel like, because it has a license associated with and then And the other one I think is like the Windows Media Kodak. Yeah. Um, and probably DivX. You could probably buy a DivX codec if you wanted to. Yeah, I can't remember exactly, but there, there that was one of the limitations. You couldn't do certain file types, but now you can. So the, just a well, little bit the, more. The, uh, the question is, why would you want to? You know, you've got a hardware-based decoder with H.264, which means the, f the, the chances of really having a stuttering issue are really low. And you can just because it's hardware based. Yeah, and you can always run um, the 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 transcoders on the PC side too, like the yeah. the like PS3 the, uh, media server or that's uh, like a DNLA yeah. version of doing it. Yeah. So there's there's different ways of getting around that. Um, man, the XBMC is so cool. There's all these plugins that you can go into. Unfortunately, it's a different architecture, this ARM, and it seems like a lot of them don't work yet. But I'm sure people will be updating them. To yeah, work. This is a baby baby steps into a new product. I believe so. this is an alpha distro that I'm running right now, so it's yeah. So I'm <laughs> in the beta broken stage. It, it needs work, but um, for the most part, AirPlay is the most awesome thing. So instead of paying a hundred bucks for the Apple TV to do AirPlay, you can buy this thing for thirty five bucks, and an SD card, a couple cables, and you can stream 1080p video from your phone directly to the device. Or and your I'll music. Tell you, for thirty-five bucks and a little bit of you know a card to put in there, it'll be the cheapest media center that you can do by far more than some of the other ones. I think the cheapest one I've run into so far is probably fifty bucks, and it's basically a Netflix player that does. Um, so for Pox and I, playing off our home network is sometimes what we do more of than we play Netflix. We play a lot of Netflix, but you know we have home videos. We've got movies that we've backed up, we've all kinds of things that we want to play. I have multiple TVs in my house and I don't want to put the $300 device in each one of them. So, Yeah, so post in the comments below what you think is the best media center box, whether it be Roku, Apple TV, BoxyBox. I got um, a Google TV, I mean, a Western Digital TV. Man, we have done more <laughs> media center. We really like media centers. Or the uh, Windows um, theater, home theater, PC, whatever. <laughs> I use it. Uh, yeah, I think I think between plaques. between the two of us, we probably let's see. I've bought probably four or five, and I know you've bought at least five different media centers. Yeah. So. But it's cool. Like on your you on your home PC, you just set up a share, have all your files in it. Bam, you can stream yeah. to it. Sometimes they're simple. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they do lots of kind of cool things. You know. Boxes like the Western Digital box are, you know, surprisingly versatile for how small they are. Um, you know, this is amazing. Thirty-five bucks, and you just got to have a little bit of knowledge, and you can do amazing things. Yeah. Um, stay tuned to the show, Two Smart Guys uh, .com. Every Monday, we try and kick out a new show. If not, please subscribe, and you'll definitely get it as soon as it comes out. See you guys next week. Bye.